Welcome to The Gaggle, where we bring you inside the newsroom to talk politics beyond what's in print. We've all heard the sounds and seen the images of the children separated from their parents during the Trump administration's two-month-long zero-tolerance immigration policy. What do we know about the children who are here in Arizona? Um, yeah, so we know that there are children who have been separated from their families that are being held here, housed here. We've been trying to confirm where those kids are, and it's been very difficult. Um, Southwest Key, which is one of the biggest providers in the country of um, taking care of uh, kids who came alone or who have been separated, said that they are housing these kids at at least eight facilities here. Um, we have only been able to confirm two, so one in Tucson and one in Phoenix. Um, we also confirmed a different program called A New Leaf. It's holding kids in Mesa. Um, and we've heard from neighbors that those kids look to be as young as maybe eight or five. Um, but beyond that, it's been very hard to figure out where these kids are right now. Mary Jo, you staked out one of these centers. What did you see? Um, I saw a gated facility in Fen. Um, you can't just walk in. And while I was sitting there, two vans pulled in, and then I saw a bunch of sort of middle aged, school aged kids standing in the parking lot with backpacks. But and we haven't reported that because here's the point we don't know who these kids are. These shelters, A New Leaf, um, Southwest Key, have been housing unaccompanied minors for a matter of years they, uh, under a contract with the federal government. They're now bringing in, as they have capacity, some of these kids who have recently been separated. So we have these different populations and we don't know how to distinguish them. Were you allowed to talk to them or approach anyone from the center? No. No. Not at all. And what's surprising is these are gated facilities that it, there's no indication of what that is. So we talked with neighbors who live next to these facilities, some of them next, right next door. And they said they had no clue that there were kids there. It's very quiet. They thought maybe one man said he thought it was an orphanage. Someone said they thought it was an elderly home. Um, so it's, it's very low key. Interesting. Laura, you spent some time speaking with um, immigrants down in Nogales, Sonora. Can you tell us a little bit about the stories that you heard there and how um, this policy before it was reversed uh, was weighing on their minds? Yeah, so right now and since May, there's been waves of immigrants coming to the ports of entry to seek asylum. In Nogales, they camp out next to the pedestrian crossing. Um, I got there, you know, right when we, the day after the tape had been released of um, that kid that we heard. Um, Crying in a detention, for her mom. Right, in a detention center. So um, definitely a lot of the people there, they have kids, they have young kids, they have older kids in their teen, in, in their teen years. Um, and they were, you know, they were worried about that happening. Um, but a lot of the people who are coming to, they're escaping violence and poverty and things that are also um, something that they don't want to put their families through. So um, some of the people that I talked to, they weren't really sure what was worse, is if being separated from their kids for what could be a temporary amount of time, what could be longer, um, was, was worse than living in a place where you know, you can't go outside and work and prepare and buy food for your family because it's way too violent. And there are quite a few people who um, support Trump's um, policy and, uh, you know, had no qualms with it continuing. There are other people who want to help in some way. How can they help? Um, it appears from talking to some of the advocates for, um, for these children, probably the best thing is for, um, to support legal support for these kids. Uh, they do not get public defenders, um, unlike other people in the, um, in the court system. Um, the facilities we talked to here basically said, you know, they would accept, you know, some good wishes. Uh, a new leaf did say it would be helpful to get some assistance to help buy clothes for these kids. Um, but otherwise, it's it's probably advocacy. Let your elected officials know how you feel about the policy. I mean, the policy has been changing a little bit. Um, you know, let them know if you support that or oppose it. Um, and there are uh, groups that you can donate to um, if you want to help out with the legal representation for the children. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. We'll continue to follow your work, and you can follow it at azcentral.com, on our Facebook page, and on Twitter.